Okay, welcome to Minecraft DevSync October 14th, 2020. We're coming up on the end of our sprint here, and uh, we're just doing a check-in to make sure uh, we're on track, or to find out if there's anything we can do to get us back on track. Uh, we'll just start with, oh, Gets. It's early in the morning for you. Yes. Perfect. Um, uh, I posted the precise um, model that Ken made um, out to the community yesterday. Uh, I think it might take a couple of days to, to get many responses back because it requires a little bit of, you know, editing your configuration and things to test it out. Um, I was testing a bit more myself and, um, and realized that it works really well for, for me and Beck. It works really well on the Mark 1 and doesn't work at all on the Mark 2, which I think kind of highlights the, well, adds weight to the possibility that we provide different models for different hardware, you know, different audio profiles that are coming through. Um, anyway, uh, I presume it's because it's just been trained on samples that we collected through the Mark 1s, which have, have completely different audio to a nice clean feed from a micro array. Um, uh, a few fixes for skills um, that have been clogging up the, well, just a few fixes for skills um, and then running into some issues with the old integration test runner um, that I'm working through. Uh, some of it's intent related and some of it's, um, I haven't figured out yet. Um, and then we've got some benchmarking stuff from um, Aditya as well on, on um, Mark II images, uh, uh, including um, the, what is now known as, my brain's escaping me, it's 6.30 in the morning, it was formerly known as Mycroft OS anyway, mm. but is now, is now known as something else. Um, uh yeah anyway i'm, I'm doing some write-up in um confluence on I the different options the there and um and uh putting all the the things in there so everyone can have a look um anyway that's probably enough for me now okay thanks uh derek next in the, in the lineup here all right. Um, yeah, mostly I've been working on a, a Rev2 of the SJ240 FTM design. I um, kind of had an impromptu meeting with Kevin because he was having some issues that he wanted to talk about with putting his together. And I'd already kind of dis, um, discovered several issues myself, um, mostly around the, well, one was the, the holes for the grill, I think we talked about last time. And then some of the mounting holes and how um, it was oriented for printing and such. So I've been working on an update for that. And um, the other thing we talked a little bit about was I had a company reach out to us. Um, they were used before for, well, we had to actually use them, but we'd quoted through them before to do. Um, Kind of low quantity 3d printing and they just have a new program to transition to tooling um and so they reached back out to us um so i talked to kevin a little bit about um to, to a little bit about that but also about uh this other company um that we looked at macro fab as um uh box build as something that they can do now. So mm -hmm. we're, I asked them to throw together. Um, we hadn't actually quoted with them. I think only mainly because of lead times, it was kind of on our short list. Um, so I want to get a call over them maybe next week and talk to them about that because they can uh, apparently do the PCB assembly and also do final product assembly. They don't do the plastics. We got to ship plastics then. But final product assembly and testing. So um, that's really interesting. 
so yeah, that's been been basically what I'm up to. So I'm hoping, so Kevin's like, okay, well, I'm gonna wait until you get these updates um, done before I continue on my prototyping, his printing. So I'm hoping to have that done tomorrow or Friday. Um, let's see, I think everything else is, oh, I've got the camera stuffs in, in the sprint, but I haven't actually got them yet. Um, the, the V2 cameras, I think they're gonna show up tomorrow. So hopefully I'll get a chance to look at those tomorrow. Yeah, and that's me. Okay, thanks. Um, are we, we're still on track to get all the parts we need to put together the uh, the next row of prototypes? Yeah, I haven't received um, the speakers yet. So I'm going to check on that. They were supposed to come in this week, though. All right, thanks. That's the, like the biggest. I think that's the only thing I'm really waiting for. All right. And uh, Chris Fair, how's it go? Hey, do we have show and tell today? No, but we will on Friday. <laughs> All right. Um, I did uh, finish writing the API calls. Um, so now the next step is to hook those up to the UI. But so I Friday I should have all that done. Um, I did, there's two API endpoints now. One is for getting a file, the information about the file to tag, and one is to actually um, present the file to the UI um, so it can be played. Um, I also uh, spent some time uh, writing some SSH utilities in Selene um, using Paramico because um, I found myself uh, duplicating some code um, when it came to doing SSH stuff uh, between Selene and the Lawrence uh, Precise server. Uh, so that's all um, coded. Um, what else did I do? Yeah, I guess that was it. So anyway, um, yeah, I just need to write the code in the UI to to call those API calls and use the data to um, to display to display it on the screen. Um, just so for for your FYI, uh, I put this in the tag in the ticket as well. But I did come up with a simple algorithm for bringing up which which um, which files to bring up. So the first thing I do is I get all the tags that are available, um, all the different types of tags, and then I randomly select one. And then once I randomly selected one, I go back to the database and find a file um, that has not been tagged with that tag type yet and has not been tagged in the last hour. Um, I was concerned about um, you know, with, with the SQL returning the same file over and over again, if I didn't put something in there to, you know, to say, you know, don't, <laughs> once it's been tagged, don't have it reappear again and again and again. So that's, that's where, where the hour thing came from. Um, so, so yeah, and that's, it, that's basically it. It's pretty simple. The SQL is not complicated yet, um, <laughs> but it might become that way if we get too, too crazy. Um, any comments on that sounds like a good starting point okay all right so yeah that's it's me okay so it sounds like you've got the pieces are in place and you're gonna spend the next couple of days tying them together yep so it looks like we can get this done by friday yes i will have um i'll have a show and tell on friday afternoon it won't be um, we'll be in production. Like I think we wanted to have it in this <laughs> this sprint, but it'll be ready to start. You know, promoting to test, etc. Okay. What's the difference between that and production? Uh, just my, you know, I would need to do the PR. I'll need will need to be reviewed, and then I want everybody to go out there and, and play with it in our test environment. Um, right. Okay. Before we put it in production. That sounds perfect. Uh, all right. How about Ken? What's going on? 
Nothing good. So went back and forth on the pull request reviews from Chris and Gez. Thank you guys. But unfortunately, it's probably for naught since all that stuff's changing pretty quickly. So I don't think I'm going to continue on that. Um, the wake word upload stuff is failing, but that's expected because there's no authentication on the URL I have right now. Uh, so when the real URL is out there, hopefully it will pass. Um, just a note from your email, Josh, it looks like we're accumulating somewhere between 30 and 50 wake words a day. I didn't do any analysis on what, how many users that represented, but um, that was good to know so that we just can't break that URL. So I'm assuming the new URL will be different. Um, I spent a lot of time looking at the USB stuff, Michael. Um, I actually looked at the Linux USB drivers. You know, we're open source, right? Uh, and it, <laughs> I'm still incredulous, but you're absolutely right. It's polled, and it's just weird, and it has a really tight polling requirement. USB is odd in that all of the transfers are initiated by the host. So even inbound transfers are, hey, <laughs> give me an inbound transfer, uh, which is odd, but anyway, it is what it is. So... Yeah, uh, whatever that means long term for the switches, I'm sure we'll figure it out. I've already got some ideas on that. The last thing was I took um, did a bunch of reading on some of the stuff Kevin sent me. Verified this with Kevin. The um, stuff I was doing for sudo is not for no because VF control requires sudo as well. <laughs> And why it would require sudo to go out of a USB port is beyond me, but it's very low level. It's C. Maybe it's going directly to the USB underlying interface rather than through some USB driver. But uh, I verified with Kevin. You know, he actually pulled up the documentation that said that on Linux, sudo is required. Uh, hmm. I tried to run it without, and it didn't. So um, I was looking at that and some of the stuff we have there, and... Um, then I actually started trying to, you know, get some stuff going on this and realized this SJ201 is not going to work like that. Even if I send out VF control stuff, it's not going to do anything because it's not hooked up like that right now, I'm assuming. So I'm looking forward to Wait a second. Uh, that, following up. There shouldn't be a difference between this and the next in terms of the XMOS chip. So are you saying that through the XMOS chip, we already have I2C connectivity to the amplifier uh. in this? Okay. So, yeah, so my point, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to have to um, follow up with Kevin. Uh, I assume once he gets boards back, that's where he'll be at, and he'll um, be able to give me some guidance on what exact commands will accomplish what. So that's where I'm at right now, and uh, I will probably get back on the VK tests tomorrow um, from the uh, Celine side or the, the actual tagging process since I'm not expecting Kevin to have boards and have answers for me that quickly. Gotcha. So the, the hope that by going with USB interrupts, we would free ourselves from those low-level driver problems uh, doesn't pan out because we still need some kind of weird low-level driver for the USB through the XMOS chip to get to, to, get to its I2C. Yeah, so I'm not sure how that's all going to look on the inbound side, but I'm Pretty sure we're going to end up with a thread that's polling periodically for the switch status and generating pseudo interrupts or calling callbacks from there. And right now that's fine because the switches and everything are pretty much glued together, right? Like a, a switch is going to increase or decrease volume, things like that. Um, there, there's one minor concern there regarding the well, not even with the signal. So the uh, the issue is if ever we want to allow users to give callbacks, there'll be some linkage issues there. But we'll drive off the bridge when we come to it. All right. Okay, uh, Josh, how goes the update evals? I'm still working on Bolina and getting it working. Uh, it's a management system for Docker. Um, I've got everything packed up, uh, and other than 
realizing that I'm taking four to five hours of meetings every day, which I'm going to start putting a kibosh on, uh, have made some progress. I should have an update by the end of the week, if nothing else, on how Bolina works and then how it works relative to the evaluation criteria, which I did write down. So mm -hmm. um, that's kind of where I am today. Uh, hopefully, I'll make some more progress between now and Friday. I'm in a working environment that's quiet. All right, great. Um, okay, I don't really have much of an update. The uh, the next rev of the Mark IIs is, uh, oh, sorry, the SJ201s is still expected on Saturday, last I heard. Um, and um, yeah, that's that's all all the news that we have on that front right now. So, anything else that people uh, would like to bring up? Uh, any what's what's going on with the community? Yeah. Yeah, well, a couple of things. Um, Gez, on the um, new model, and you said that it works better on the Mark I and not the Mark II. Um, that's somewhat surprising to me. Uh, how does it work on your laptop? Um, I didn't try that yesterday. I, I think it works. It works better there, yeah. too, or worse there. I, I'm, I'm surprised by that input. And then just the last thing, somebody posted something about Python IDEs. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, real men use VI. So that's my input. <laughs> is this what, Python is, this is such a horrible language. language. I, need a, I need something to help me debug. <laughs> I, now I see why you and Hooker get along so well. <laughs> Be good or we're switching to Erlang. <laughs> I did think about Haskell. All of you, all of you hush. <laughs> Tell us what you think in the comments down below. <laughs> we haven't commented video yet. <laughs> now, which functional programming language would you like us to switch to? Uh, I did put some information out there about PyCharm. So. Okay, yeah, thanks. Um, okay, so. I I was just, uh, I was curious, like, um, how, uh, what's going on with the community right now? Um, is there any, any updates you can give us on things that might yeah, be hot, hot topics or? Uh, well, I mean, my attention has been very much on the, on the lingua franca stuff. Um, but, um, what else has been happening? There's, uh, uh, the porcupine, uh, wake word spotter seems to have had an update that you know has broken something at some point um so there's people working on that um uh I, the george n model uh yeah did the, is that still a work in progress yeah I, at the moment um so we've got a pretty good has anyone given that a go no no, I didn't know it was right. available to give a go to. Uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll throw a link in the chat. Um, I put some instructions uh, in Jira, I think, on the ticket, because Jira is so amazing. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's, it's sounding pretty good. Um, I think we want to go back and get some new recordings for specific sounds. Um, but I also want to make sure that so the sounds that it's having trouble with are like soft sounds at the end of phrases. And I think it might be related to the way that the recording studio tries to, um, tries to, you know, package up its, its recordings. So, um, I've, I've heard, I haven't looked into this, but I, I've heard that it sort of tries to detect where the end of the, the clip is and then, and chop it for you, which, seems like a really bad idea in some ways or like that we could do that, but then provide some grace period so that we don't actually chop the end of phrases off. Yeah, I've, I've um, heard that it, it, it chops off some of the end of words and that's been causing problems. So I think, I think it's caused more problems with like soft sounds. So I'm assuming that it, it has a better, it can, it can more easily detect the end of a word when it's a nice hard, like cut to, you know, whatever. But when it's softer, like a put, then it it chops a bit more of it off than it intended. Um, 
So I think that is my complete hypothesis. You know, no no data on on that that's actually the cause of it. But um, we do want to go back, I think, and get some extra phrases recorded with some of those soft sounds, particularly at the end of um, of the phrases. Um, yeah, but uh, but I'm I'm using that voice um, locally, so it's it's working. I can give you some samples if you want. Uh, I spin up Minecraft very quickly. I don't understand. Oh, there you go. Was that a, was that a Russian accent, Micro? Uh, it's. I'll I'll send you the link. Um, it 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 sounds. It's not as crisp as like I you know, I think we could get, but it's sounding a hell of a lot better than it used to. That's that's the okay. key. And is the data, the data is the problem that we trimmed it when we ex when we recorded it? I don't, I don't know. Like, I think that that was what David used to say. Um, that was what David was saying when he was trying to re um, retrain it. Um, El Ticino, Ryan Ryan's less sure about that. Um, you know, because he's been able to get it a lot. You know, to sound a lot better than than what we're used to, um, but we're also using uh, Tacotron two now. We're using Mozilla's TTS rather than the the Mimic two TTS for this run, um, and so maybe that's part of it as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm 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 still thinking that the data has a part to play in that. <laughs> Yeah. How does that compare to the Casal voice, do you think? American man. Uh, I mean, yeah, like somewhat comparable. I think I think it's I haven't really done like a, you know, trying to jump back and forward kind of a thing. I've just been using it and it it's it's a hundred percent usable and I'm kind of preferring it. So maybe that's I don't know if that's just, you know, I people expect female voices from voice assistants and you know that's that's a lot of work that a lot of people have done and that's why all the assistants you know kind of do that female voice as the default so i don't know if it's my my you know weird you know being that just prefers a female voice or if it's actually better you know all right yeah all, all, all that work is being done by um by the community though right yeah 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 Cool. By Ryan. Big shout out to El He's uh, awesome. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, okay. Well, thanks. Uh, we'll call it there, and we'll get together on Friday, and we'll have a cool show and tell from Chris. And uh, oh, and uh, I just received confirmation that the SJ two hundred ones will ship on Friday. So we'll get them on Saturday. Oh, awesome. All right. Uh, thanks, everybody. We'll see you in a couple days. Okay. Everybody on Friday.